Hi. Hello. Good, ev uh, good evening. Um, thank you for watching. My name is Paul Maxwell Walters, and I'm the I'm uh, hosting this session with Jean Ann Harrison, a tester who will be presenting about testing complex systems and aircraft. She's an excellent tester, and um, I'm sure you'll find the talk very interesting. Now, first of all, let me just talk a bit about Sydney testers, and then I'll take you through a few slides about what we do, and then we will start the presentation. And there will be a Q and A after, uh, there will be a Q and A session afterwards. So um, first of all, just to let you know that um, we will be um, tweeting under the hashtag um, Sid Test J Harrison. If you have any comments, and please, um, you'll also be able to comment within uh, YouTube and post questions by using the live chat. However, you can also, if you wish to uh, talk about it on Twitter, you can go ahead and, and uh, use that hashtag. Also, Jean and will be. Um, um, including our own Twitter um, handle in her presentation notes. So um, this is a brief presentation, no more than a few minutes, and then Jean will start followed by Jean Ann will start. Sorry, followed by a Q and A. Uh, who are we? We are a group of volunteers that um, you know try and enliven and provide good quality events for people here in Sydney. Uh, we organize monthly talks and socials. Obviously, because of the coronavirus, we're currently doing them online. Um, we will move on. To, uh, we're trying to get a set of international speakers and local speakers to speak at events every month. Uh, there will be two actually um, during the month of September. Uh, we have a wide range of local international speakers who've spoken at our events in the past, people like Rick Michael Bolton, James Bark, Trish Koo, and uh, we're always looking for people to get involved in our events. Uh, and in our committee, we are looking for various committee positions, you know, people who can do them. If you're interested, please let us know. And we have an ongoing sponsorship relationship with uh, Test Ed. Um, you know, please check them out. So um, now I've just introduced to you Jean Ann Harrison. I'll just let her take over the slides, take over uh, the screen. And um, I think hopefully, and I think you will be impressed by her talk. Jean, hello. Jean Ann, sorry, hello. How are you? Hi, Paul. How are you? Uh, excellent. Good, thanks. Thank Great. you for speaking, by the way. My pleasure. And certainly it's an honor to speak to the Sydney testers. Oh, it's an honor to have you, it really is. Thank you. Okay, um, I guess uh, I should start? Yeah, just please let us know when you want to move to your slides. Okay, um, I'm gonna uh, do the slides myself, unless- now, uh, um, You can scroll through the slides, I'll just project them onto, the, um, oh, okay. onto, onto YouTube. Okay, great. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about is system integration testing for an in-flight entertainment system. And um, what I'll be talking about specifically is um, a very high level approach to this type of uh, system. And one of the things I think that people forget that when they're when they consider themselves testers, they're doing it from a software only point of view and they're not necessarily thinking about full system integration i talk about it often with other people and they forget that it includes hardware firmware and software and all the interdependencies of the that putting together so we're talking about integration and i think sometimes people forget and they focus mostly on the functionality of the GUI. <laughs> and that's really not system integration testing. So we have to have a mindset change. Anyway, uh, let's get started. Um, so what I wanted to do is to first uh, talk about briefly my background, and then uh, I wanna talk about um, the story about this in-flight entertainment system from end to end. So you have a a better understanding of what I'm dealing with. And then uh, 
you're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about firmware, hardware requirements, firmware requirements, software requirements, and then I'll break it down into a high level architecture discussion uh, so that you can understand um, at the architectural level, what might be needed to think about. This is the key. We want to be able to think about what we're going to be testing and we want to plan it out. I have said this probably for the last 20 years, plan your testing. Do not just assume, oh, let's just run and go with it. We really need to plan it out. And this is the, the biggest gotcha when it comes to automation testing. People just want to write code. They want to run, 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 run. And <laughs> we've got to plan it out. What makes sense? What makes sense in type in terms of the testing? What makes sense to automate? Some, some tests really are not viable as automation tests. Others definitely are. And we could really benefit from both aspects. So we want to make sure that we understand and plan out our testing. So anyway, um, so understanding a high level architecture design is really something that's really important. So we're going to, I'm going to talk about hardware to software and the interdependencies that go along with that, along with, um, so in this case, this particular system, I'm going to talk about the components of the system. And that would be connectivity, an entry, um, entryway uh, software system. And then I'll talk a little, very little about the airport personnel software aspect of it and how it all interconnects. Then I'm going to talk about test design organization. Now, what this means is not, I'm not talking about the testing organization. I'm talking about organizing and planning out your test design understand how to get ready to actually do the testing so you can figure out what makes sense to do the um the automation testing and what makes sense to um apply exploratory testing at, on a manual level because some manual tests are really important that have to be done but so many people are rushing to do automation they think they have to do all automation i just had a conversation with uh, somebody in my organization that he he said, oh, yeah, we're going to be, be doing all automation. I'm like, no, we don't because we don't have automation testers. We have a few, but no, we're not going to be doing all automation. It doesn't make sense to do all automation. It depends upon what you're testing, of course. A website makes sense to automate everything. Um, but, you know, when it comes to system testing, uh, it doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. And so what is cost effective to actually maintain? Anyway, I'm going to get off on that uh, tangent and I don't want to do that. <laughs> the point is, is system integration testing does involve both automation and manual testing. And we have to understand what we're planning to do. What kinds of exploratory testing are we going to be doing? What kinds of tests are we doing? What kinds of um, performance tests are we doing? Are we doing error testing? The, all these kinds of tests are really important to understand and organize to get ready to do, to tackle on a project, okay? So I briefly mentioned about test concepts. So test concepts, we're, we're gonna talk about hardware components and what kinds of tests are important for hardware components. And this is the thing again, that I've run into with um, with testers, they've said to me, especially when I was working uh, as a tester of a medical device, oh, I don't test uh, hardware. That That's the hardware department. I'm like, no. As a software tester, as a system tester, you're testing everything in terms of how does it all work together? Because, well, I'm gonna use something, I'm not gonna use the medical device example, but I will use your phone. When you are testing your phone, an app, and that app might be, I don't know, let's say uh, an email system, a brand new email system. That email system generates a notification on your phone. Well, guess what? That has nothing whatsoever to do with software. That has to do with hardware and firmware. That's it. 
people don't think about that. But that is what happens to see an, an LED light on your device. That is hardware, pure and simple. And the firmware is telling the LED light to actually turn it on. So this is the thing that I think testers need to understand in terms of a mindset change. We are not just software testers. We are testers of all of it, of integration, system integration testing. And that's what we need to really focus on. Um, and, and, you know, our to, in today's world, uh, we're, we're testing systems, whether we like it or not. It is getting to that point because all, all systems are getting more and more complex. So I want people to really think about going with, um, with understanding that we have to test hardware, we have to test firmware, we have to test software, and how it all interacts together and understand the interdependencies. This is why architectural knowledge is incredibly important when you're doing system integration testing. Hopefully you'll be able to see this as we move along. And then um, what I'm gonna talk about is test types. And I have some exercises towards the end. And keep in mind, the exercises are something that I want you to focus on as an opportunity for you to practice because it's incredibly important to practice and to get used to understanding all these different levels. It's, it's a complex system. This particular system is incredibly complex and I'm going to skate. I mean, really skate over the complexity because otherwise this presentation would end up lasting for days and days and days. It's a very complex system, but, um, it just to introduce you to the idea and then you can run with it and come up with your own ideas. And I would love to hear your um, ideas myself because I can always learn from you. And I always look to learn from other people, especially you have to collaborate with other testers. That is something that's very, very important. So pair testing might be a good idea. Mob testing might be a good idea. Um, just think about all those types of uh, doing a, well, I should mention, um, a, a few years ago, well, probably 10 years ago, I was doing uh, a weekend testing session. We were, we were running weekend testing Americas and I did a couple of, uh, Sydney, Australia, uh, weekend testing sessions for the, uh, Sydney, Australia, uh, not, not just Sydney, but Australia and New Zealand testers. And I did a couple of those sessions and, what is interesting is being able to test together and to learn from each other. It is really important to do. And I still get people emailing me saying, Hey, you know what? I learned a lot from that session. And I say, you know what? So did I. <laughs> and I saved all those sessions because I still look back at them and I come up with ideas. I look for inspiration every time I can learn from anybody. It's just a matter of keeping my mind open to the opportunity. So this is my advice to all testers. Keep your mind open because you never know what can inspire you. And um, yeah, we'll have uh, questions. And um, at the end, uh, we'll also, I'll share my contact info. So I would like for you to keep in touch with me. Just, I ask if you do use my email, make sure you put in the uh, subject line, Sydney testers meetup so that I know where the, uh, the email's coming from. It's really important for me to disintegrate w where these emails are coming from because I do get a lot of emails every day. Okay, so onward. And just a little bit about myself. Um, I have um, probably uh, 20 years ago now, um, I did, I was testing a multi-tiered uh, system where it involved mainframes to uh, to, to uh, Oracle databases, as well as um, uh, SQL Server databases. Then it went from there to Unix. Actually, no, wait a minute. Let me see. It went, okay, desktop application to, uh, to, to SQL Server and Oracle databases to Unix uh, Perl scripting to the mainframe so that this, it was going through the system 
in these levels and I had to test all the way through from the beginning and back again. So it was end to end. And basically being able to watch what is happening in that system gave me a really strong understanding of how important it is to test everything from a uh, hardware to firmware to software and all the points in between. And this is one of the issues that I learned was that you have to understand the sequence of what is happening when. When you understand the sequence, you then can better test and you can cover further ground quickly. So this is something that I stress to anyone who's trying to test systems is to make sure you understand the sequence of behavior, expected behavior and unexpected behavior. Um, and that's where I learned uh, testing that multi-tiered system. And that was a company I worked for. Uh, my, people might know the company, uh, Houghton Mifflin, which uh, actually published the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, they, they are a publisher and they tend to publish books but they also um, published uh, some fun books like Lord of the Rings. And, um, but the system itself was very complex and I grew to appreciate the level of testing involved with that. And then um, I had, uh, I did move on to other types of testing. I, I did end up uh, testing a, um, a streamed, I shouldn't say live streamed, but a streaming movie uh, movie system that was done through pretty much through a web application. And um, it was owned by, I don't know if people know um, the actors, but Morgan Freeman and Danny DeVito were um, basically the head owners of that system. And that was something that I really learned to appreciate um, more of a web application testing situation and understanding how it affects the, um, the web server as well as personal devices. So having that connection between two different sets of devices and how important each perspective is, that gave me a strong understanding of, again, system testing and system integration testing. Then I moved on to the medical device world and um, this gave me a strong understanding of uh, um, critical testing. So, you know, when someone's life is at stake, it becomes really important to be very diligent about your testing. And I, um, I was testing a, uh, a heart monitor, a mobile heart monitor that people wore when they did their daily routines at home. And um, I was testing, you know, how the doctor would get that information, but it would take like six or seven applications, software applications, including firm, firmware. And of course the hardware device itself, which in, incorporated two pieces of hardware. That system was very complex and I found some very interesting bugs and I have some me so many stories that of that uh, testing uh, situation, but I've learned, I learned a lot and I greatly appreciate that opportunity. And uh, I also did some testing uh, for a, um, uh, a device that performed, uh, it was a robotic arm that would perform uh, knee and hip replacement surgeries in the OR. That was quite an experience. And I didn't do it for very long, unfortunately, but I did learn a lot from that experience as well because I understood that part of that system was the actual staff that were in the operating room with that device and getting it to work. So these kinds of things are experiences that I've learned to incorporate in my my testing uh life and right now i just tend to test all the time all that i think that way and i i don't know how to express that passion to others but i am a very passionate uh tester 
And I will say that uh, I'm very willing to mentor people and I've done it for many years. Um, I've also uh, uh, spoken a lot at various conferences and um, I, I love meeting people. It's just that my time is precious. And so that's one of the issues we have to work through a schedule. If you want to contact me, I'm willing to certainly work out a schedule and we can, we can see what we can do. Okay, so um, moving on. So this is the first part of, um, I'm going to talk about the story first before we, yeah, the, let's talk about what this in-flight system is. So it, when you're talking about um, you're in an aircraft and you want to stream a movie that you decide, you know, I'm bored, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to watch a movie. Well, there's, there are a lot of pieces to get that to work. Um, for example, when it comes to hardware, of course, the aircraft itself, but then you've got the antenna, which talks to a satellite. A lot of people don't realize that that's something that, uh, if you want to, to have a connection with the internet, you're going to have to, uh, purchase a plan to be able to talk to, or I should say to, to be able to, uh, to have access to the internet. Well, to be able to do that, you have to understand that there are different pieces that go along with that system. And so there's, um, when, when you're dealing with the, the, uh, the, the hardware components, you're, I'm going to, again, talk very high level. You've got the antenna, you've got the satellite, you've got the, um, the ground satellite, because there's two different portions of that. So there are things, there are beam switches, there are uh, beams to be able to make sure that you maintain that connection. So if you're in an aircraft and you're flying uh, from say Sydney to, um, uh, to Europe, well, you know, if you, if you purchase an internet plan and you expect to have that internet plan throughout the entire flight, and um, what ends up happening is, is that satellites switch over beams from one satellite to another because of the zones, the way that the, the satellites are working. They go from one uh, satellite to another. And I don't know the technical terms, but, um, but it does certainly switch over. They call it a beam switch. And it maintains the connect connectivity. However... Sometimes it doesn't maintain that. So this is, this is a test we have to think about. Well, what happens if, and that's one of my favorite questions when I'm talking testing, what happens if I do this? What happens if this happens? What happens if this situation occurs? You're coming up with these testing conditions and that's something to think about. But this has nothing to do with software, right? I mean, it has to do with hardware it, in terms of, these pieces are working together to allow the, um, uh, the, the, the person to purchase a plan. So this is something that we have to think about when we're testing this, this, um, this system. And um, so when you are testing or when, when you're dealing with this, this particular system, you're dealing with different pieces. You're, you're dealing with, um, talking, the antenna has to talk to a modem. It has to talk to a connectivity server within the aircraft. And it has to talk to, um, the different components. Like I mentioned earlier in, in the agenda, in the agenda, um, was there's connectivity. That's one software. Then you've got the entryway software, and then you've got the, um, the software that allows you to uh, connect with the airport, airport personnel. And that's things like um, uh, reports. So how long somebody um, wants to go ahead and um, review how long connectivity was maintained for the entire flight. Now there's, um, yeah, I don't want to go through that yet. <laughs> 
I'm, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I'm just trying to give you a general explanation of this system. So um, with, with these uh, different um, pieces of this system from a hardware perspective, and this is the, the particular slide, I want you to see that you have, you know, the antenna and the antenna sits on top of the aircraft. There is a cover that covers the antenna to protect it. And so you have to think about how you would test or what you would test for that kind of a situation. What would be important when you get a brand new aircraft with a brand new antenna and a brand new cover? What kinds of things would you want to test? Think about that. And then does it make sense? Does that antenna still maintain um, communication with the modem? Or does it change due to different circumstances? These are the kinds of things you want to consider. So I'm going to go on to the next slide. And this is a little bit more, um, so I'll talk about the connectivity server. And as you can see here, this is um, this, this is different pieces. Again, this allows the, con the connectivity server goes ahead and allows not only the passenger to connect to the internet, but it allows the pilot to talk to the passengers or to talk to the crew. Then it also allows the crew to talk to the passengers. So for example, if you're going ahead and you're watching a movie and um, you know, all of a sudden there's, there's an interruption because the crew is trying to, or the pilot is trying to give you some information. Everything stops, meaning the, the movie is put on hold or on pause and you actually hear the, the, the message from the pilot or the crew. And that is, that is the opportunity where the connectivity server takes, takes over and says, okay, wait a minute. The priority is the crew or the pilot being sp speaking over the internet activity. So that's something that, again, types of tests that you have to think about that you would want to do if you were testing this system. It's, uh, it's really important to think about this from all different aspects. And it's not just from a passenger perspective. And that's one of the things that um, I think sometimes people forget that they're only looking at it from, oh, this is the, uh, from me as a passenger, I'm going to test it from this perspective. There's a lot to this system that you have to think from different perspectives. It, you know, it might be something where you're testing, does it make sense from a business pers perspective. So me as the owner of this system and I'm selling it to an airline, what is important for me to test, to maintain my business? And this is the thing, you've got to come at it from different perspectives. And that's what I want to make sure people understand. It's not just from the passenger perspective. So talking about, quickly, the, the aspect of safety, because as you know, when you're dealing with, um, with aircraft and you hear all the time about, you know, when you get on an aircraft and, or an airplane and you go ahead and you hear that the pilot say, um, or the crew say, you've got to turn off all your, um, uh, uh, devices, make sure they're in airplane mode and no cellular activity. Well, the reason for that is, is because it does interfere with the navigation system. And so when it comes to software, the, the software itself can talk to the connectivity server and it can create um, difficulty to, to uh, the instruments within the, the pilot, uh, pilot cabin. That's what I want to say. And it can create a problem there. And so keep in mind, you've got one connectivity server on this aircraft and you've got to maintain, of course, you don't want the plane to crash. So you want to have 
um, a strong system in how the priorities are set appropriately. Now there is um, there is an opportunity to have cellular con connectivity once you're flying, but there are certain phases in the flight that allow that that activity. So that's again that's uh, that is a lot of information. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to keep this high level, but the thing is that there are different phases of a flight. Um, it starts at the beginning where you're sitting and you want to be able to take off. You're on the ground. Then you do take off. Then you do ascend. So you're going higher. You're ascending into the air and then you're cruising. So you're maintaining a certain level They usually, um, the pilot is on auto autopilot at that point. And then, then you, you start to descend. So you start coming down. And then um, after that, you're on the ground. You've landed. And then at that point, that phase is now the, um, the airline is taking over with all the software from the aircraft. So those are the phases. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit in terms of testing. But they're just from that perspective of the phases of the flight is really important because there are different activities at each phase and there are different tests at each phase that have to be done. So as you can see, this is fairly complex and you, you can, I'm sure you're thinking, huh, I bet I should test this. I should test it because you automatically, you start thinking about all the different tests that you need to do. So um, it, it really does get complex. Um, okay. So with the connectivity server, as you can see, there are a lot of pieces just within the aircraft itself in this slide. And you want to be able to have, uh, the opportunity for passengers to get access to the internet. And that's where the software, the entryway software allows that it gives that GUI to the, to the, um, to the passenger. And one of the things is I, I'm sure you, when you've flown, you've seen the moving map, you know, when you're, you're in flight and I, I look at this all the time because I'm fascinated with where I'm at at that moment. I need to know where the plane is at that moment. And, um, and the moving map is something I find fascinating. Keep in mind that, you know, that moving map also contains something really interesting. It maintains temperature. It maintains height of the aircraft it maintains time now that that's an interesting point it could be is it gmt time is it local time is it uh, does it change automatically when you go from one time zone to another all these these types of tests really need to be considered so it's important if you're just testing the moving map alone you can come up with all kinds of different things so um Anyway, the, the, the entryway, um, the entryway software is something that, um, I think that that would be important to start off with. Think about the test there because then you start expanding in how it goes from there. So the, um, the entryway software also allows the, the crew to communicate with passengers and each other. And uh, they also have software that allows the crew to talk to the ground crew. So this, again, is really important. Again, at different phases, it changes. So there's a lot of, lot of different things that going on there. Um, okay, so I just wanted to give you that perspective, uh, a little bit understanding of how important it is to make sure that the connectivity software talks to the modem, which talks to the software of the antenna and the antenna talks to the satellite. And, and as long as you understand that aspect, you can then start thinking about different types of tests. Okay. Oh yeah. So this is one of the things that uh, I just a quick, um, quick uh, um, slide. But there is a lot of wording here. I'm not going to read this wording, 
you all can read it yourselves. Uh, but it's just to give you an idea of some of the things that we look for. One of the things that is really important is that, again, the reporting software is important to maintain what loss of connectivity occurred during flight. Um, and this, this type of thing would be downloaded after the aircraft is on the ground. And, but it gives the, that report to the, air, the airline personnel so that they can understand what happened when. And then that does get transmitted to the company who creates this system. And they can help the airline to, do, uh, to have a better product. So it's one of those things that um, testers really have to think about what kinds of information does the airline need to know. And usually that happens, that's a business uh, decision um, between the airline and the company creating the software, or the, I should say the system. So, okay, moving onward. Okay, huh. this is the hard part. This is a lot of hard work. And one of the things that I want to talk about is to make sure, again, you plan your testing. Did I mention plan your testing? Plan your testing. Plan and organize. Make sure that you understand, first of all, the sequence of events during your end-to-end -end system. So as long as you understand the overall sequence of what is supposed to happen when, then you can now plan out what kinds of high level testing and then more feature level specific detailed testing. It really does help to understand it from a high level and then down in the weeds details. So make sure that you take the time to learn. One of the ways that I learned how to, uh, to test the, um, the overall was I spent gobs and gobs and gobs of hours reading and studying log files. Now that doesn't sound like a lot of fun, but I will tell you, I learned exactly what things happened when. I would go ahead and I would try to do one condition and just watch the log file and spit out the information and I could see what was happening. I found more bugs this way and bugs that the developers had a hard time finding and fixing. I had one bug that lasted four years because the developers did not understand. Uh, it was an intermittent bug, but I could reproduce it every time. And it was something that um, they just had a really hard time trying to figure out how to fix it because they didn't see how I could reproduce it. And I kept reproducing it for them, but you know that's the way it goes sometimes. It, it, you just have to be able to show exactly what happens when. So make sure that you understand the system in terms of the sequence of events. Really important aspect of system testing. Okay, um, I want you to understand that the best way to, to do the type of system testing is to break it up into smaller pieces. Now, I'm not saying to, you know, test, oh, well, okay, the login screen, we're going to just test the, the name, the, uh, the name and, and the password and, you know, Yes, you're going to do that, but you're just focusing on a very small, tiny piece when it comes to system testing. What you want to do is to go ahead and create scenarios and create that those scenarios. And it's almost like creating an entire test suite for um, a section or a feature, because then you can then start putting those features together to then create an entire system test. But you wanna be able to organize and think about and plan out your scenarios. So understand and break it up into pieces and then put them all together. 
But again, you've got to put them together in a sequence that should happen, not necessary. And you might want to test when it's out of sequence, what's going to happen. But a lot of times people don't have the time for that. I just want to mention that it might be possible if you have some time to do that, to, to definitely try it because you'll, you'll find some interesting behavior. Okay. And um, what I want to do is to make sure you understand what types of tests you want to do. Think about, you know, um, boundary tests. Think about the types of performance testing you want to do. For example, performance testing, I define performance testing as speed and timing, load, stress, and endurance testing. Sometimes scalability, but not necessarily with system testing. Scalability I use for web testing or website testing. But just to give you an idea, if you plan out these tests, you can then figure out and organize your tests overall. And it, it's really helpful to be able to do that. And you'll find as you're planning it out that you're coming up with ideas of um, testing more high level. And what happens if, when to do this? Then you start coming up with more specific test plans or test cases as you're doing that. So you want to be able to think high level and plan it out and then start digging down into more detail. But don't get so caught up with the details because then you lose efficiency. Be careful about that. It really, I, it's easy to do. Trust me. I'm sure many of you have uh, got caught up in that aspect. But and, and I will say, sometimes it's really important to do that. But with system testing, remember to maintain the overall high-level design, high-level architecture. And think about it from that perspective, as well as from end-to-end, -end, how a user would use the system. Both aspects are important. Okay? And now, what I want to talk about is hardware component testing. So if they're interconnected, what kinds of tests would you come up with when it comes to an antenna talking to a satellite? What would you do? I know what I would do, but I want people to think about uh, what might be a possibility. So one of the things that, um, that I would think about is, well, do, is there a connection? Is there a connection at certain phases of the flight? Is there a maintained connection? Do we lose do we lose that connection? Why would we lose that connection? What would cause that loss of connection? So you have to think about all these different aspects of just that aspect of it. Um, now, to be able to have that connection, that would be uh, hardware and firmware. Uh, it's not just hardware. But um, I will say this, when it comes to um, putting a an antenna on an aircraft, what would you do if your antenna and the cover that protects that antenna, what, what would happen if, for example, you're flying in a, a severe thunderstorm? Would you maintain connection? I don't know. Not sure. Got to test it out. What about extreme temperatures? What if the, um, the sun is hitting the cover directly? Is the antenna protected with that extreme temperature, whether it's cold or hot? Um, what about moisture? Moisture is something that would be something to consider. Does the cover protect it? And then how does the, um, how does the, the, uh, the widgets and the, the cabling maintain that antenna in place? And all those connections, all the, those different aspects, uh, you know, the, the temperature and the, um, uh, uh, the, the earth elements that, might affect those that that installation all of this is part of this testing this system 
it's it's all part of it. So this is something that again you want to make sure you understand. All these pieces are all interconnected to be able to have the overall system work. To have that passenger be able to to watch that movie, the tester has to think about testing the aspect of temperature on the cover and the antenna. See what I'm saying about this, this level of complexity? It's a very big system. And you have to think about, from, from a tester's point of view, you have to think about all these different pieces. Now, again, there's not one tester testing this system. <laughs> no way. There's many testers that do, and they're assigned different aspects of it. But this is something that we cannot make sure that hardware testers only are testing this and software testers are only testing software because, you know, the interconnections between these pieces really does have to have a perspective from an overall perspective, not, um, what was the whole word I want to say? Not a uh, specific uh, mindset. We've got to be really careful about that. Testers have to understand we have to have a much more open-minded perspective, okay? So um, I did want to talk about that. I wanted to give you that uh, thought process to start off with with hardware. And uh, so let's move on. And again, I'm not going to read these slides. There's a lot of, a lot of questions here, a lot of uh, words. I'm just giving you something to think about. So this is uh, a mind map I put together, again, very high level. But uh, these are some of the uh, ideas that uh, you might want to put together. And again, this could be a very, very filled mind map. But I was just trying to do this for this particular presentation that I wanted you to think about. Um, so these are just some ideas, uh, you know, conditions of widgets and cabling can become loose during, during a, for example, a storm, or maybe uh, turbulence might jar something that, that comes loose. So you have to make sure to test those kinds of things. And um, that's something that I think, again, uh, software people focus on software, and they forget that this could actually affect the behavior of the actual software. So if, for example, if you go ahead and you're flying in an aircraft and you're the pilot and you hit turbulence, but the thing is, is that that turbulence jars a particular cable that connects to the antenna. Well, now all of a sudden the connectivity server, server cannot talk. So therefore the pilot cannot uh, communicate with, with the passenger crew. Then what happens? Well, that's not very good. That would be a very bad situation. So, and, and I will say this, it's very highly unlikely that it would happen. However, it's possible. Uh, but you just have to make sure to be aware of this kind of thing. And you want to test for these things, especially if it's a new antenna, if it's a new set of cables, a new, new set of widgets, a new uh, covering for the antenna a new aircraft, um, you know, this kind of thing is, uh, you know, you have to understand that we as testers are involved in all of this because then it affects how this, uh, the whole overall system works. And it does affect what you see in the, uh, in the software. And um, I do have a story, a really interesting story that I want a lesson learned that, um, and yes, good. Okay. This is what I wanted to share with you because this is a lesson I learned, um, 18 years ago. <laughs> and I remember it well, because it, it was a hard lesson to learn. It really was. Um, it, it's something that, uh, when you see an error in your software, your first reaction as a tester is, Oh, I got to report the error. It's a, it's a bug. And you just report the error and you don't really think about where that's coming from. What is the problem really? What is causing the error to appear? 
And well, you know, it's not always in the GUI. And that's the part that I think that, um, well, that I've certainly stressed in my career since then is because that was a hard lesson to take and it was a hard lesson to learn, but I'm very happy to have learned that lesson. And hey, I'm still talking about that lesson 18 years later uh, because it's really important to understand as a tester that if you find an error and I found this error and I reported the error and I was fairly new, well, I was fairly new to formal testing because I've been testing informally for over 30 years. Um, I tested the very first IBM uh, email system back in the mid eighties. <laughs> and, uh, but as I wasn't a tester then, I was just someone that was interested in computers. So uh, they asked me, to, IBM asked me to test it. And I said, sure. And, um, and it was kind of fun. Uh, but this is back in the day when uh, telephones were connected with a desktop and <laughs> that's how you connected to an internet uh, situation and you had email. It was really, I still think about that, uh, that system back then. But anyway, the, um, the thing is, is that when it comes to testing, uh, the, the, the errors, what ends up happening is, is that you can't assume that it's within the software itself that you're using you have to make sure to understand the interconnections or I say interdependencies um, within the system. So I went ahead and I reported the error and now there were, I was working with a team of developers and I reported the error to one developer that was working on that particular portion of the software. And I ended up wasting his time for two days because he was going ahead and he was searching the root cause and he could not find it. And so when he told me that he had no idea how this error was occurring, I went back to the drawing board and I spent more time testing. And what I found, and I showed him what I, what I was seeing. And what I found was that it wasn't actually in his portion of the software it was for another developer and that developer was sitting two desks down from him. And he's like, Hey, wait a minute. That's my software. Well, shoot. I had no idea that I, that I didn't realize that it was appear, even though it was appearing in that section, it really was not part of that software. And this was a hard pill for me to swallow that I wasted someone's time for two days and someone that was really busy and didn't have the time to waste. And I took that very hard myself, a hard lesson, because I don't want to waste anybody's time like that. That was horrible. Um, and we were all under great pressure to get the, the, uh, the system finished. And anyway, the point is, is that take the time to test a little longer. And I'm not saying to, you know, take four days or take three days or whatever. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, is take the time to isolate where you're seeing the problem. This is where sequence comes into play here. Because if you understand the sequence of what is supposed to happen when, then you can start narrowing down exactly where that bug is and give more information to the development team of where that bug is appearing. So really take the time to learn that sequence and then take the time to isolate a little more. And I'm talking, you know, it might take you half an hour. Well, you can afford a half an hour in, in a testing situation, even a half a day. And go ahead and take that time and isolate. Give the information, give as much information as you can to the developer. And don't just assume that, oh, it's just, it appears in the GUI. So there, it's, it, the error is there. So it's enough. It's like, no, that's not enough. And I tell testers all the time. And why? Because of my hard lesson that I still have trouble even swallowing to this day that I did that. Because it really was a horrible situation. We were under tremendous pressure. 
and um, uh, I just, I get very frustrated when I think about it. So moving on. Um, anyway, what I wanted to do is that the thing is, is that the firmware is something that I think a lot of people don't really think about when it comes to testing. But firmware is something that allows, and maybe some people don't even know what firmware is, but what it does is it allows the software to talk to other portions of the system, whether it's hardware, whether it's other software that's connected, but not directly connected. It's not, it, it's a different application written in probably a different language. And so the firmware allows the communication between those, those uh, software, software applications. And, um, it might be something like uh, what I, I like to con, uh, to compare it to is um, it's a messaging system. It's like a um, like a subway, so you know, or the tube, where you're taking one train to a location, and then you need to take another train to get to a different location, or you need to take three different trains to get to one location because it doesn't go directly. So this is this is the way I think about firmware. It's like you're taking these different aspects, these different tunnels to be able to um, get messaging to one software application to another or maybe software to hardware. It's, it's just being able to travel. And it's important to understand that you need to um, utilize your log files to understand what messages are being tra transmitted between the different uh, um, aspects. So it's like software to firmware, so or I should say software to hardware, or software to software. So as long as you, you take the time to read those log files and see what kinds of messages are being communicated, you can then come up with critical tests that allow you to cover a wide range of uh, actions and be able to cover more tests in, um, in an end-to-end -end situation. So it might be, um, for example, in, in this aircraft situation, you're going ahead and say, oh, well, all right, my end-to-end -end is passenger needs to uh, talk to the crew member to ask for um, maybe uh, permission to get up during a time when they're not supposed to. And they're, they're asking for uh, help from the flight attendant. Well, to be able to do that, you have to take uh, the, you're using maybe your, your PED, uh, your uh, personal electronic devices PED, going ahead and you're using that to, to communicate with the system. And to be able to do that, you want to get in touch with them because maybe, you know, you're in the middle of uh, turbulence and well, you can't get up and neither can they. So you want to be able to communicate and you do. And that being able to talk through your PED to the aircraft system goes ahead and takes different a different subway train to be able to talk to one another and what you have to do is to watch the 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 log file and see what happens when when you're doing that to to set up that type of testing condition but you're covering a lot of different aspects when you're when you're doing that that scenario. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> I, I think about this all the time because to me it's it's natural, but it might not be to other people. Hopefully it, it, it does make sense. And I, I would love to hear if there are any questions about this um, to make sure that it's understandable. Okay, so next what I wanted to do is again, these are system tests of firmware. Um. Um, actually, Jean Anne, there's a few questions. If you want to answer them now, or shall I leave them till later? Um, well, why don't, why don't we try and uh, address them now? Okay, cool. I'll go through them one by one. Okay. Uh, first one is uh, by uh, I'll put it on the screen so that people can see it in the live ch in the um, 
YouTube presentation. Yeah, okay. Dima Makievas. Uh, Most of the widely used software is running on more or less standard hardware, i.e. virtual machines and operating systems. What about virtualization in aircraft? Oh, they, they do have virtualization uh, software that's in the system, as well as um, they, they have in our labs. Mm. So we, we do both aspects. Um, and I think that answers the question. I'm not sure. Okay, well, um, if it doesn't, then um, then somebody can ask, then Dima can okay. ask again in the chat. Uh, okay. Another question by ARJL Ford. Um, I wonder what the handover delay is when you switch from one satellite to another. Is it a seamless or does it take a noticeable amount of time? That is a really great question. Um, and it does depend upon which uh, handover it is. So I know there, there are different zones. There's one, there's the European zone. There's a European to Atlantic. There's um, uh, the Western uh, part of the United States to the um, mid Pacific. And then there's another one. I, there's so many different ones, but, uh, and it does depend upon which satellite communication um, system that you're using, but uh, they're working on improving it. But right now they've got this type of situation. I think it's like seven or eight zones. And what ends up happening is, is that some of them vary, but uh, and some uh, uh, have difficulty. The reason why is so, for example, you can't just uh, um, have an immediate connection when you're flying over North Korea um, because of the, uh, the, the communication that is allowed or not allowed. So there, there are different aspects that have to be considered. Um, but um, usually it's seamless. And uh, I, I will say seamless in the sense of we're talking within less than a minute. But sometimes the, the loss of connection can be significant to the point where you could lose, you know, if you purchased an internet plan, you can lose that plan you can lose that purchase. And that it depends upon that type of system, uh, entertainment system, uh, you know, how that is uh, developed. But some, some systems do have, um, do have really good recovery aspects, some do not. So that's, that's just something to think about. Okay, thank you. Um, another, another question, um... I wonder how security testing looks like. I think you might be covering this in future in later slides. Um, hijacking plane, plane instruments from multimedia screen sounds scary. Yeah. Um, I there is some security testing that's done, and it, the, there's a lot of different aspects about it. Uh, as far as one of the aspects is is the content that is being available. So um, you can, what you can do is you can limit the type of um, access within the satellite to the aircraft uh, and the connectivity server. And that will then maintain holistically in the actual aircraft. But uh, there's, there's a lot of security testing about data that mm. is being that's still being examined it, it's again the, for example if you go ahead and you enter your credit card to be able to purchase a plan well that's that's pretty um important data and if it's exposed to uh um a, a, the cloud for example well that's not very secure uh, at least not in my mind. It depends upon how secure that particular cloud is or that particular aspect of the cloud. So it, it just depends upon how that so software is developed and how it communicates. So it, again, it can be very, very um, complex at that point. But it does, I mean, we, we have penetration testing in our, in our, uh, system 
and we do have to we have to have it. But um, on various levels, it's not just uh, passenger data. So hopefully that okay. answers. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, next question is by Nilanjan. He says, uh, what is the team size? How long is the release cycle and how much do they automate? Okay, well, I, the, you, uh, the first part of it, I didn't hear. It uh, what, what, size, what size is the team? Oh, um, our team right now is our testing team. Hmm, gosh, uh, right now we have two, three sets of teams. We have um, a, a team in Florida that's about uh, 10 to 15 people. Then we have, um, and that's system level testing. Software testing is a d different aspect. And uh, there's another, uh, I want to say another five people for that. But it's, that's um, split up in components of uh, testing. There's a component software. So again, that's a different set of um we have three different, right now we have three different components of software and each component has their own testing group, software testing mm. group. And then the system testing group is about 15, about 15 people um, in Florida. We have another uh, group in California that's about, I want to say about a, at least another 15, probably closer to 25 people. And then, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then we have uh, offshore testing group, and that is probably about another fifteen people as well. So it's definitely we have a large, large group. Well, it, it does seem large, but you know, obviously, it looks like they've been kept very busy. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And our projects last um, well. We're not very good at meeting deadlines, unfortunately. Um, but that's because, again, it's not just the testers. It's the overall project planning is it's difficult because we're trying to make sure that we're covering all the different aspects for those features that we're trying to release. And it, it does become hairy. It, it's d overall design is um, takes a long time. Just to give you an idea, um, I was just talking with um, with a technical authority uh, just the other day about how many requirements that we have, system level requirements, not software, system level, over 7,000 requirements for wow. a particular baseline release. And we're, we're at uh, a baseline level of um, seven. All right. So, yeah. So we have over 7,000 requirements. So our, our um, baselines releases take, uh, we try to do it within six months, but it doesn't always work out. Yeah, I imagine. Um, Nilan actually asked a question that was related to that. He said, um, is there a separate team for testing hardware or is that covered in system testing? That's part of system testing. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I think you mentioned something similar to that at the start. So yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. We have, cool. Well, we have we have people that also we have uh, certification <laughs> authorities that make sure that things are um, okay to be actually installed on an aircraft because we have to go through that particular system testing certification. And that, that particular aspect is a separate group, but they're, they have the um, integration testers, the system integration testers come in and help with that testing, that certification testing as well. So it, it's, um, it's more than just, um, uh, you know, one group does one thing, one group does another. It absolutely has to be done together. And this is the point I'm trying to make with testers across the board. You have to understand that it, it's a job for all testers to consider the entire system. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs>
well understood. And um, you've certainly highlighted that, you know, a number of times in here, and I can fully understand that, especially in the, you know, in these sorts of mission critical and very complex scenarios. Right. Um, that's the, I think that's the last question for the moment. Um, okay. Do you want to continue? Yes, I would like to. Okay, thank you. I'll let you, I'll bring well, up the screen again. This is going longer because as usual, I'm t talking too much. So I'm going to try and uh, go a little well, faster. Well, understood, but you know, at the end of the day, we're f I'm finding it a very engaging conversation, oh, and uh, okay. I think the chat is as well. Okay, I, I appreciate that. I'm glad to to know that people are enjoying this and they're learning. Bottom line, they're mm. learning. I want to learn from them as well. So please, people, if you're listening, we, I'd love to hear from you. We actually had a few very sort of strange scenarios. Things like, how cool would it be to say to the pilot? Uh, hey, we have to test how well the satellite maintains connection when the plane yeah. is in a deep dive. Can you do yeah. that now, please, for my system test? Oh, yeah. you could a virtual a virtual machine, and we have. Yeah, but somebody um, did say that they should use um, um, emulation. Yes, yes, absolutely. We have emulators uh, to do that different testing, but yes, you, there's no way around that. You can't actually take a plane and do that. Although we do do actual ha have flight tests for different mm. aspects. Um, we just went through it uh, recently, specifically with um, a, an antenna and uh, making sure that we can maintain the different phases of the flight and be able to maintain connection, um, whether it's uh, if, if there's an internet connection at the, um, uh, from ascending to cruising to, uh, to deplaning. Mm. And, and so that's one of the things that we got to make sure that we maintain that connection. And we just do that to make sure that that antenna is actually talking to the, yeah. the right, uh, uh, satellite. So yeah, it's, it, it's something that we, we actually go through actual, um, flight tests as well as use of emulators. For well, that's sure. incredible. All right, thank you. I think that's it for the moment. So I'll let you okay. get back to your. Okay. So um, again, the aspect of firmware uh, connections and firmware tests, you want to come up with user stories. And this is one of the things that I did with this uh, mind map. And I just want you all to uh, consider different types of. Um, uh, oh, too bad you can't see it because the screen, I don't think you can, see, oh no, you can see it. Okay, just on my screen it is, okay. So, um, you know, user stories of just scenarios. It's more about scenarios than it is about user stories, but I use that term. Um, but for example, um, making sure that you're getting messages from the uh, antenna to the modem. Well, how do you test that? Well, you're going to have to use an emulator to, to test it, to make sure, and then have um, have it in the lab. You know, you, you have um, an antenna. What we do is we have an antenna on our roof of our building, and then we have modems inside in our labs, and they conduct tests to make sure that there is a connection between the two, and they can talk to one another. Because again, we have to make sure that there is that connection maintained. And then it's, again, to maintain that connection throughout different phases of flight. Okay, so I'm going to move on. Okay, so software to firmware to hardware connections. And again, I want to make sure that you think about an overall end-to-end -end situation. What is it, you know, I'm... I'm going ahead and I'm wa I'm uh, watching a movie and I decide, oh, I, I don't want to watch the movie anymore. I want to look at the moving map. Well, right there, that's connecting different pieces. But I can see myself, and I've done it. I've definitely done it <laughs> in a in a in a flight where I've gone ahead and I've paused my movie and looked at the movie map so that a moving map so I can see where I'm at at that particular moment. And I also get the temperature outside the aircraft and I also get the time, but it's the, the GMT time or it might be the local time. And I have seen it um, with, when the time change because of the time zone change. So when I'm flying in the US, because I've never flown outside of the US yet, um, but when I've flown from the East Coast 
to the West Coast. I actually see in the moving map the time change from East Coast time to West Coast time. And I think, huh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> um, I never really thought about it before until I started working for this company. And it's like, hmm, I never realized that that would have an effect. But that time is maintained through the um, satellite. It is not the actual aircraft maintains it. It comes from the, the, the situation that you, the communication with satellite. That's when, when it changes. So again, you're dealing with software to firmware to hardware to, you know, to, to be able to understand that that time change is responsive to the software so that the, the user can actually see the change in the time. So that's something that I think we have to think about those kinds of situations and you want to be able to think and to end, it might be important to think those large scenarios that then you can then create conditions to do the testing to cover a wider aspect of your test coverage. And I think that that's where you become more efficient in your testing. And, um, okay, uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this mind map um, and that's where, again, uh, different, different types of situations that you want to be able to test from an overall situation. Um, it might be something where, again, you want to purchase a, a movie plan and, oh, by the way, I'm flying, uh, I'm, I'm a citizen of, uh, Canada and I'm flying over, um, uh, flying over, say, the Middle East, let's say Egypt, and I I purchased the plan, I get to, to see that, I get, get to watch my movie, and then at the end of the day, when I get my receipt in an email, and I receive that, that, that receipt in email of the particular plan, say I purchased the highest level, the most expensive plan, and I want to be able to have that receipt to not only to reflect what I purchased, but the right taxes that are being applied to my credit card. A lot of times people don't think about these kinds of things in terms of that might change if, if I say I'm from the United States, which has a different set of tax taxation uh, laws. And then you know, maybe it might be that uh, I'm a citizen from um, from North Korea. That's a good one to use. And they don't allow um, open-ended uh, internet plans. So they can't purchase. So now you've got a system that has to make sure they understand that, oh, if this is and they're from North Korea, they can't purchase a plan. That means they can't, they're not allowed. So we got to shut it off. And then you've got the Canadian citizen has the right taxation applied to their plan. And then you've got someone from, say, England that has their taxation laws applied. And so you have to think about all these things. And oh, by the way, um, I know Europe has um, a very strict rule about children being able to uh, send out uh, personal data. So for example, they have, um, uh, they use a credit card, but they can't, they, they're not allowed to, to uh, uh, share information from a security level, I believe it is under the age of 13 or something like that. So that might be something that has to be worked into the software to think about that. I know we've, we've done that this, uh, we've created some, uh, um, Requ uh, security requirements about that. So it's just these kinds of things. We have to think about all these different aspects and make sure that when it comes to the overall architectural design, think about all these different things. And then from there, we then create tests that have to apply to the overall situation. So there's a lot of different conditions that we have to set up, but we have to do it from a system level point of view. And 
to make sure that things work the way they're supposed to. Hopefully that's understandable. <laughs> There's a lot of different aspects to even think about, but uh, I, I know for myself, I've only been working for this company for three years and I've learned an awful lot. Uh, I still, I, I still do not have a complete understanding of the system because I don't get an opportunity to actually test it on a regular basis. I test it here and there, but I don't test it regular basis, which is a shame for me because I would love to get my hands dirty. Anyway, onward. Okay, so I just had this discussion um, about functional test types and um, non-functional test types. And one of the things is, is that, and I said years ago that non-functional testing is performance testing. And I have to say, I'm going to take that back. I don't agree with that now. Um, I, functional or performance testing really is functional. It's just a mindset. Um, well, anyway, um, I, I don't know. It might be kind of fluky about that. Um, yes, you could say it's non-functional, but um, there, there, you have to perform functions to be able to see the results of that test. So this is, um, this is one of the things that you want to be able to, um, with the functional tests, to think about feature testing or scenario testing overall. And that's one of the things that um, I think that passenger, um, passenger or user experience testing. So this would be the passenger and how the passenger would say, oh, well, I can go ahead and I can purchase a plan and I'm going to take a survey and uh, how I like the, um, the overall process. It was really good. It wasn't good. I didn't like this part. I didn't like the moving map or I did like the moving map. I did like the games, all of that, that, that would be user experience. Um, to understand that kind of testing, but then you've got the crew and, you know, can the crew communicate with only each other? Meaning the crew can only communicate with the pilot and the pilot can only communicate with the crew. And does the, uh, what, what happens when the crew wants to make a, make an announcement to the passengers? Um, does it pause the internet connection or does it pause the, um, or does it, does it break the connection altogether? So for example, if, um, if someone is watching a movie and they lose the internet connection and they, to allow the, the crew member to talk to them, well, she's that that's not very fun. And, you know, and then the passenger goes ahead and has to repurchase a plan because they lost that, uh, that connection or can the connection be recovered? Um, what if, uh, you know, again, we're going back to that beam switching and does the, uh, does the passenger have to repurchase a plan? Maybe, maybe, maybe you're, you're flying, you're purchasing a plan, but you're right at that point where you're having that uh, beam switch and you lost connect connectivity. Well, did I lose? my purchase plan or didn't I, or do I have to re-enter everything? Do I have to start all over? This kind of stuff, you have to think about this. So be able to think about different aspects of the user experience, the airline experience, and don't forget to think about your company experience, meaning what is important to your business? What kinds of tests are really critical for your business? Okay, so make sure you consider all these types of tests. And uh, these, these are just functional test ideas. These are high level again, but um, again, this is a mind map. This is something to go ahead and for you to come up with different types of tests that you might want to consider. I would love to see some, um, some of your ideas and maybe we can have a discussion one-on-one uh, -on -one to come up with um, some more detailed tests. Okay. And uh, I did wanna talk about performance testing in general. Um, again, speed and timing is one aspect. Uh, make sure that you understand that, you know, for example, 
How fast do you want to connect? How fast do you want to recover? You know, what we do have is a situation where um, it's uh, the, the plane goes into deplaning, not deplaning, goes into descending. And uh, there was a loss of connection with a, a particular bug that we had. And it re didn't recover right away. It took 10 minutes. But the other thing was, was that it ended up rebooting the entire system, the connectivity server. And so nobody could connect for 10 minutes. And that did not make for happy passengers. And it didn't make for happy airline customers either. So this is the thing that we have to think about to understand that how fast does it recover? And um, it might be something that uh, we just want to be able to test the baseline and understand where we're at at the moment. This is where we recover. This is where we're at right now. So make sure that you think about um, the, the uh, speed and timing. Another aspect of performance testing is load testing. Well, how many customers, how many passengers can actually uh, purchase a plan and use their connectivity um, throughout the flight? Say, for example, you have uh, 250 passengers and they're all using their own PEDS <laughs> and they all want to connect with the internet. Well, geez, that's going to take quite an effort. Um, but can, can the software and the system handle that load? Don't know. Try it. But again, this is where virtual systems, uh, virtual machines can help with that type of testing. And then there's stress. Well, what if we have a plane that uh, holds over 350, but our maximum is 250? Well, we, we have to test a little bit beyond that, that uh, limitation. So what happens if? So if 250 passengers are using it at the same time, but we've got 250 users actually viewing a movie. That might be an issue of performance. But what if you've got, you know, for example, um, maybe half of the 250 people, 125, are actually only connecting to the internet and they're using their laptops for work. So they're typing or they're emailing, but they're not necessarily dealing with um, heavy performance type of imagery on the, the system. So that might be okay. It might not be. It's just something that you have to understand the stress level. What, what can it handle? And then endurance. Can someone, can, can people uh, purchase plans and use the connectivity system for the entire flight? And is the flight, for example, it might be uh, two hours. It might be 15 hours. Can it handle it? And that's something that we have to make sure that we understand that. Whoops. Okay. So this is just some ideas. Uh, again, um, go ahead and try different ideas. Try, try, think of different uh, types of tests that you might want to do based on those concepts. And um, hopefully you can come up with some really good ideas. But again, this is something that we have to make sure that we think about all these different types of tests that are applicable to our system. And um, what I, I did want to say was, again, I'm going to make sure that you read through these slides because I'm not going to read every single slide. That's not how I work. That's not how I do things. And you'd be really bored. But, but what I'm going to stress overall is understand testing the system requires understanding of hardware, firmware, and software, all interconnected, and all understanding that each aspect affects the others. So one, uh, one quick thing, uh, one quick lesson I have to tell you about is that when I was testing, um, well, I can actually apply it to this one. Uh, when it comes to um, testing the, uh, the temperature, on the uh, the antenna or the moisture moisture on the cover and then it leaked down into the antenna. It um, it actually affected the connectivity of the um, uh, the connectivity server. It wasn't connecting anymore or it was losing connectivity, but not for everybody throughout the aircraft. 
it was only certain aspects because there are zones within the within the um, the actual aircraft. So what was happening was that they there were some people were having connectivity the whole time, others were not. But it actually was because of what we found was that there was moisture getting into underneath the cover and into the uh, the actual widgets and uh, shorting out part of the antenna. So how weird is that? But yet this is the kind of thing that I am going to stress is it's important to understand the overall system and how it can affect the behavior that we see down the line or a different aspect of the line. But yet the root cause was way at the beginning. <laughs> so again, you have to think about it from an overall perspective in understanding the overall architecture of what is happening when. Sequence, 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 really important. And um, really understand your system objectives. Really understand it. What is it that your system is trying to do? And what is it trying to do for your company? Make sure, again, I'm going to stress, the business aspect is just as important as the user experience aspect, as well as the passenger aspect. So keep in mind, our users are the airlines as well as the passengers, as well as our company, because we have different technicians that help us install software, install hardware that, you know, we have to make sure that they understand what they need to do. So we have to be very clear about our documentation. So again, there are different aspects that we have to consider and make sure that you think about these things when you're doing the testing overall and your uh, objectives. Again, isolate bugs. Please remember to not waste developers' time. Uh, I, I can't stress enough how awful I felt when I did that for two days. It still bothers me. So um, I'm going to say one last thing. Practice, practice, practice. Come up with tests using your, your PED. And one, um, one little uh, exercise I've done is to test my tablet and then use my phone and going ahead, very simple little thing, going ahead and accessing Twitter on both devices and rotating my screen. Do you know that with the, um, the Apple or the, I'm sorry, the iPhone, was it the iPhone or was the iPad? It was one or the other. And I haven't used them in a while because I usually use Android, but that's my preference. Is that, um, but I remember the Apple um, iOS did not respond well where it could, it did not rotate the device, rotate the, the screen. So you, you, no matter what, if you rotated physically, you rotated it, it didn't ro rotate the software. So visually, it didn't work well, but yet no problem on Android. So this is something to, you know, just trying these different types of things when you're using your devices. Try different testing in, in terms of an overall system and seeing what you can come up with. You'll be surprised how much you can come up with different uh, tests and start thinking about it. Start accessing the uh, log files in your devices and reading what is happening when. You'd be surprised at how much information you can get from doing that. Okay, and then any further questions? I'm done. Uh, hello again, hi. hi. Uh, yeah, we've got a few more questions. Thank you for that very nice presentation. Um, we've got a few more questions that have come up. Um, okay. Yeah, first of all, I'll just, how do you prioritize what fact, Oh, sorry. The how do I prioritize? And then you cut out. Uh oh. What? Oh. Can you uh, repeat? Uh oh. Can you hear me now? Now I can hear you. Okay. Um, 
let me try that again sorry uh how do you prioritize what factors can or cannot influence connectivity for example do we need to test for high humidity high low humidity etc uh, you might be able to it depends upon what what might be important the most important so that that's where criticality comes in is it a, a situation that might happen more often that might not so it, um again it would be up to the um to the particular company that is producing this type of system and um whether or not that uh might be a very likely situation how critical would it be if something happened and that you, the the humidity meaning high humidity affected the overall system behavior how, uh, how critical would that be uh, so you have to you have to balance out um, the severity and the um, the priority so again it's it's a situation where how likely would it happen and uh, really how severe severe is it I've had situations when I was doing the medical device where the severity is person's life. But then again, the priority of it and the likelihood of it happening was that was very, very rare. And the, we had to make a decision on whether or not a business decision on whether or not it was uh, critical to test that particular situation and to fix that situation right away. And so this is where you have to work with your project team and be able to understand what is the most important uh, from a criticality point of view. And risk, understand risk and um, document that. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, the next question is um, from ARJL Ford again. Uh, you mentioned user stories. I'd be interested to hear about how much, how much feedback, bug reports, complaints, compliments you get from actual users, do they influence your testing? Oh, for sure. Um, there was one thing, uh, and I brought up taxation. We had a customer that um, we had a flight test uh, that, um, and it was, we were testing it out in, in an actual um, aircraft with passengers. And they were uh, going ahead and they were purchasing plans. And they went ahead and they purchased the plan and the the report actually showed that they received no emails why we didn't know at first but the entire uh flight was uh nobody received uh an email with their purchase plan and really then we found out that the taxation was never ca calculated and that was a big problem so there was a lot of issues with that, but fortunately it was a test flight situation and we could go ahead and say, Hey, you know, we were testing it out and it was our, it was already free. They were only paying a dollar <laughs> for the, for the plan. Yeah. But, I understand. So, so yeah, so it wasn't a big deal, but it was a big deal. And we did, we did take the time to, and it did, we had to do refunds. And then after that, we, we uh, took the time to fix that situation. So we do get a uh, direct passenger feedback and we do get airline feedback. And we, we try to resolve it again, criticality, risk. We have to weigh that in. It's really important. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the next question is by Nilanjan again. Um, do they use uh, an agile release? Uh, uh, sorry, let me say that again. Do you use an agile approach? I would think that's difficult. How long is your release cycle? Um, well, it's funny you mentioned that. Uh, they're trying to, um, but it doesn't work well. And the reason for that is, is because um, we have, again, software level and then we have system level. So mm -hmm. we can't necessarily do um an agile software environment because it just simply doesn't work it's it's a system level situation and we have to make sure that we cover it from a system point of view um we try to don't get me wrong we certainly try and there are aspects that we can go ahead and implement certain agile like 
responses. One of the things is, is that when we do these flight tests, we can go ahead and we can um, respond immediately with, um, with different fixes. But the, the problem is, is right now with the airline industry being uh, devastated due to the pandemic and um, our company has, you know, pulled back up with our resources availability. And so we've had uh, people doing lots of different roles that they wouldn't normally have done. And so um, it, it becomes difficult to, uh, to, to just jump right in and take care of uh, immediate uh, fixes that have to be done. But at the same time, we, we also have to respond to critical uh, issues. So we, we are being very thoughtful about uh, responding to critical situations. And we have uh, customer program managers that work with the airlines. And, um, and we certainly do respond fairly immediate to, um, to critical issues. But um, we do have release cycles that do take um, months. It, it's just the way it is. But again, we're focusing on um, features that are being implemented in our projects. So um, it's very, very difficult to, to, um, to have agile like environment. But we, we're trying. We're definitely trying. It's just it's a difficult situation. Well, I imagine it would be. Well, yeah. I imagine that you know you're always trying to get better at these. You know, implementing yes. agile approaches. Yeah. Um, uh, a, a comment, really, not a question, from um, ARJL Ford. Surprised to hear that all these nations-based restrictions needing to be taken into account. I would have guessed that it would just depend on the nationality of the airline. Sounds extremely complex. Yes. Yes, indeed, it really is. And we do have to think about that when we're developing the software, definitely. And there are different rules applied to each nation. And there are different rules that are applied to, from what I understand, I was working on uh, a particular feature that we were implementing where it wasn't just the, uh, the person where the person lived, but it was the person of the, the, the citizenship. So there was one aspect that was citizenship and there was one aspect of where they lived, but it was a different location. <laughs> and I yeah, like, I yeah. Oh, it, it, very complex. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I'm going to do that so people can see that. Okay. Um, Let me just, um, there's just a few more questions. Um, okay, sure. um, it's up to you if you want to, if you, you've got time to do them or not. Um, First one, um, how much time do you spend with planning? How much documentation do you create? Well, <laughs> um, we discussed this actually previously about the amount of documentation that gets generated in these things. There is a lot of documentation. Um, I, just to give you an example, uh, I was reviewing a test plan uh, the other day, and actually I started reviewing it um, the first round uh, over a month ago. and um, that test plan was ended up being far too large. And I said, guys, you've got to change that. Um, you've got to make that smaller. Who's going to read it? Who's going to read yeah, it? 150 page test plan. Nobody. Um, so I said, I understand the complexity. I get it. But you've got to plan out your testing a little better and focus in on exactly what is needed. Don't include all these different architectural diagrams. And one of the things was um, they actually were including test cases. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not part of a test plan. <laughs> um, but th they were trying to combine it all together. And that's that's just how they were working. Um, but uh, I was going ahead and I was reviewing a uh, test plan just yesterday. And um, there was a lot of information that, that they they covered quite a bit in a short amount of um, pages. So it, it went, this was the same test plan. Originally it was 150 plus pages and they got it down to 38 pages. And keep in mind that includes a table of contents that includes mm. a 
a data dictionary, a list of uh, figures, a list of tables. So I was pretty impressed that, that they went down quite a bit. The problem is, is that there were some uh, incorrect information that was logged mm. in. And I had to, I, I still have to finish reviewing it. Um, and I'll be doing that this morning. Um, cause for me, the time is, uh, four, almost five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So, uh, thank you so much for doing it. That's such a late time for you. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. As you can tell, I'm, I'm full of energy, so I have no problem with yeah. that. <laughs> but I think that the, I think the watch, the, uh, the viewers should, you know, pr appreciate that fact as well. Well, I, I mean, it's important to me. It's important yeah. to help others. And this is one thing that I'm going to ask testers to do is to help each other, talk to each other and work with each other because it's really important that we all learn from one another. Because every time I've talked to other testers, I've learned so much I've mm. never thought of. And I want to appreciate their perspective. I think that's really important. We. You never know what you're going to get inspired by. I uh, years ago when I was leading a test team, and I was uh, teaching, I was doing uh, brown bag lunches, and I said we're gonna we're gonna spend once a week we're gonna spend um, an hour just talking about testing, but we're gonna have testing skills exercises. And yeah. one of the exercises was, you know, I saw this um, this helicopter flying overhead and on my way to work. And I said to him, I says, what do you think would happen if, and I just started coming up with all these questions and, um, and I was trying to get them to think, what would it mean if this helicopter fell out of the sky? How would it be possible to maintain that helicopter in the air? And what if, you know, they went under a bridge or over a bridge, but the, um, you know, the, the traffic uh, felt the, um, the fuel, a fuel that was, yeah. leaking. you know, all these kinds of things. And I was trying to get them to think. And this is the thing about testing overall is critical thinking skills are so important. But when we started talking and started learning from each other, we also start, oh, well, what about this? And what about that? And we, we came up with all these different questions. And it was really interesting to have these conversations because, again, it's it's about thinking and coming up with ideas together. And um, I, I think so. And one of the great pleasures of running a meetup group, um, well, at least being involved in it, is the fact that we get so many people come together, you know, to teach and to really give up their time freely. Yes. And yes. Their, their knowledge freely. It's um, one of the great things about IT as opposed to maybe other industries is that right. um, sharing of knowledge and breaking down those silos is very heavily encouraged. Right. And that's one of the things. This is why I'm doing this, because mm. I'm doing it to, so that, again, that I can share any experiences that I've had to inspire others to come up with their ideas. And, and again, I can't stress it enough. Please contact me. Feel free. Just again, with email, I get a lot of emails every single day. So please just tell me where I know you from and that will help a lot. And um, I just want to hear from you because again, it's not about you, it's about me. I'm gonna tell you, I say this in every single presentation I do. It's about me learning from you. It's not about me, it's not about me teaching. It's about me learning because mm. every time I learn from somebody, it doesn't matter where I get inspired from. I just get inspired. So I want to make sure that you as the listener, please do the same thing. Please talk to others. Please learn from others. And that's my spiel. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. You know, it's uh, and um, you being on here and other people doing talks like this only just encourages people to, you know, appreciate their own skills and want to teach yes. them. Yes. And that's another thing. When I was lead test, uh, a lead tester, I cannot tell you how many times I would sit with the new tester, the brand new tester. And I would say, Let, let's see what you can do. Or why don't we work together and let's see what we can learn from each other. 
They were always yeah. amazed that I could learn from them. But you know what? When it comes to a new perspective, that is treasure, pure mm. treasure, because I am so hardcore right now and hard coded about my thought process that I want that aspect, that newness that I've lost over the years. And I, again, it truly is treasure. And um, so you never know every single person. And this is something I learned from James Bach. And it is very true. Every single person has their own experiences, their own stories. And that, those stories, and if somebody wants to think about, oh, I could never speak, I could never get up in front of people, I could never do, you know what, your story, and this is what I've said to people over and over again, your story is important, your story and your experiences, you never know how they could inspire someone else, you never know, just share, that's bottom line, that's the way it goes. So this is one of the things that I want to to be able to share with all you, all of all of the audience and you, Paul. Oh well, well thank you. Uh, just one more question, I think we'll wrap okay. it up. Um, well, okay. first of all, a couple of nice uh, some nice comments. Uh, a R J L Ford says, "Excellent presentation, thanks." Thank you. And uh, he also comments with, "Thanks for getting up so early, going to bed so late. We we appreciate it." Well, I appreciate you. I, I certainly do. Okay. Thank you. Uh, ben Sweetman um, also says, appreciate it, Jean-Ann. Thank you. I appreciate you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Just one more question, then we'll wrap it up. Um, okay. Do most of your customers use pretty standard configuration? Is there much fundamental variance between customers, or do they only have cosmetic differences between each other? Uh, I would say there is differences. Um, there's certainly, that's a great question. I love the fact that you use the, the word configuration because that is a common uh, term in my work. And that- the, um, it, It's interesting you use that word as well because you followed it up with curious because I'm interested if you test using a standard config or say the configs of your top five customers, et cetera. Mm, no, every single cu airline customer has their own configuration. And yeah. keep in mind, there are different types of aircrafts as well as different airline customers because each type of aircraft will have a different configuration as well as the different hardware will have, for example, there's one type of antenna manufacturer versus another antenna manufacturer. And there are different hardware pieces that are appropriate. There are different cover manufacturers and, you know, the list goes on and on. So each configuration can be very different depending upon the airline and depending upon the type of aircraft. So for example, a Boeing 737 MAX has a different, uh, a very specific type of configuration that our system can work on. But then again, it doesn't necessarily work with an Airbus um, aircraft. And then, you know, you might have a customer like um, Virgin Airlines versus um, uh, North Korean Airlines or China Airlines or whatever. I, I'm trying to not use our customers, but, um, you know, yeah. just those, those kinds of things is that um, it just depends upon, you know, what, what the customer wants and what they expect. And we ta tailor our product towards their configuration or what their expe expectation is. I hope that. Okay. Answers. Thank you. No, that's, I think that's uh, perfect. I think that answered it. Let me just um, add, add, add my video to the stream because I want to, or my screen to the stream, okay. because I want to uh, momentarily talk about our next event, okay, which is great. happening in a week, actually this uh, Thursday next week, we have, um, uh, Zoe Tivert, who's a uh, tester from um, Nouvelle Caledonie, uh, New Caledonia, uh, which is which is actually just next to Australia, and she'll be talking about the notion of the of the bug is itself buggy. So her particular view is that we need to redefine what we need, what we mean by bugs, and um, and uh, and th this greatly affects how we we you know we communicate and work with development teams key stakeholders, that sort of thing. It's uh, a presentation, it's the first English version 
a presentation that she did uh, earlier on this year at a conference called Frug Agile France uh, 2020. And it's a real treat for us because it's the first English language version of that presentation she's doing for Sydney testers. And I'm really looking forward to it. And, uh, and uh, yeah. all of those who are interested, please I come on, uh, please watch it. Sorry. I would, but, like to, I would like to have the link to that one. Oh, that's fine. I'll send it to you um, afterwards. Thank you. I mean, um, because it's an online event, you don't necessarily have to sign up to Sydney testers to, you know, meet up to watch it. And I'm sure quite a few people who've watched it tonight probably haven't. But but I'll share, I'll send you the YouTube link. Thank you. Um, just one more final thing is I just want to thank you so much, uh, Jean Anne. It was a very very interesting, entertaining talk about an area of testing that pe probably people don't really consider um, or think a lot about, but but it is incredibly complex and quite challenging and very interesting. And I have to thank you so much and um, to you and also to the audience who've come to watch it. This video will be up in Sydney uh, and at this link and it, people can watch it in the future. If you've, you know, if you, for some reason you've joined late or you've had to drop out for a bit, you can always come back and watch it. The slides, I'll be posting a link to the slides um, in the description shortly. Um, in the meantime, I want to thank you, uh, Jean Anne, and I want to thank the listeners and the viewers for watching. And I need, to, and I want to wish you all a happy, a good evening, and uh, obviously to you, Jean Anne, a good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Please stay on the line. I'll just end the the broadcast. Okay.